Hello YouTube, my name is Trey, welcome to What Kind of Change. Today we're going to be talking about the Gays Against Groomers documentary about the kids who were uh, fighting against Pride Month. They wore some shirts that said there's only two genders and another young lady hung up an American flag to contest with the Pride flags. And so we're going to go over that. Before we do that, if you want to like and subscribe at the end, once you watch this, please do. If you don't, cool. We are working our way towards the soundboard to help with the sound and just to get everything a little bit more tightened up here. If you want to help, you can donate there. We're getting a PC soundboard, not a big $3,000 soundboard. I don't own a studio. I own a little bitty office that you guys see. So we ain't, we ain't trying to go crazy here. So I appreciate all y'all donations. We are community funded here at this channel. So much love to all y'all. So let's get into it. So let me set the premise. So pretty much what happens is the gays, the groomers, they go to this, uh, they're trying to create their own network, as you can see at the bottom. Shout out to them. They go to this school, and there's been an incident where they had a whole Pride Month, and the, the, the kids were trying to speak out against it, and some things happened that the parents didn't agree with. That's pretty much all you really need to know. So let's watch. I'm not going to show the whole thing, obviously, because it's, it's a long documentary, but I will give you the main points that I wanted to speak on. straight kids and the LGBT plus community. It's not that we dislike the community, it's that we don't get the same support at the school. There's not a straight month. It's, you know, we have these kids that are just trying to, you know, be represented and they are not being represented in the school as the LGBTQ plus kids are. And I just wanna help support my kids in that and my kids' friends. Could you walk me through a little bit about the, um, the political climate at the school? What has that been like? And why do you think it came to such a head this year? Well, in the past couple years, they've taken away the um, king, prom king and prom queen. They just have a court or a royal court or whatever. So it, they don't have the gender in that anymore. So they've taken that away. And that was, I think, last year. Um, and it's just, it just keeps expanding. It's just more and more it keeps put it, going into the schools with the LGBTQ stuff. And we just, I just don't want it in the schools at all. I mean, this is not the right place for that. This is, you know, for children to learn and they're not learning. My kids have fallen way behind. This attitude where... This concept uh, in, uh, about the kids falling behind, you'll see more of this in the video. This is the issue that we have to have is don't make kids have to be activists like that. These young children just trying to go to school are getting every agenda pushed into their face and they're having no choice but to stand up, which is admirable, fine. But at the same time, kids are having to spend so much not trying to get indoctrinated or get sucked into a certain agenda because it's so in their face that they are going to fall behind in school because it's like imagine going to school and you just say well you know i don't really rock with the pride thing and then people bother you every day people are asking you questions every day you're stressed out about going to school because you know people know that you're on the other side of stuff and you can't even fight it because the teachers the faculty everybody's against you and it's not like they're putting up anything to support you they're not going to put up no uh they're not going to put up no religious flag they're not going to put up no uh, they're not going to put up, hey, let's let's celebrate straight people today. They're not going to put up anything to represent you. You're going to have to fight against pretty much this big mob of people who, even if they don't care, it feels like every day you're getting it pushed on you, but you're not allowed to even speak. Imagine as being a kid how stressful that must be. And when you're in high school, as much as it's really not that important to these kids, it is because remember, these kids aren't. They don't have hindsight. This is as real as life is going to get for them at 15. They're learning how to control their emotions. They're learning how to get through life. And so I hate that when we see this in the schools, there's always this constant, oh, these kids got to be activists against these adults. It's crazy to me. All right, so let's uh, move forward a little bit here. There's another part that I enjoy. Um, this part is going to be about um, a woman whose son also wears the... Uh, there's uh, two genders shirt and there was another uh, there wasn't like a huge incident. Uh, but hold on, let me go back to the, the we're going to see the kid here talk about wearing the shirt and we'll go from there. So you understand what's going on. As being a straight male, um, do you feel like during Pride Month, the LGBTQ, are you being represented at the school or are you being excluded? I'm being 
well, ex excluded, so like the one teacher, she's saying like biologically and scientifically that there are more than two genders. And yeah, a teacher has said that to me, Miss Allen. And uh, she thought it was hate speech and like very discriminatory against uh, other students that didn't believe in that. Since I started wearing the shirts, they like really came to not liking me, like really. I wasn't trying to be discriminatory of them. I feel like they should have like honestly just left it alone. It's like, it's none of their business at all. Uh, no, it was me and my two other friends. She, yeah, she like was holding my back kind of, like gave me a little bit of nudge and she's like, come with me. And she like direct, like she like, directed me to the office. We got dragged in at the same time. We were in the hallway walking together and then she just dragged us in because we were all wearing the shirt. Right as I got into the office, I started recording. We're all just laughing about the fact that we're getting in trouble but for a shirt. It's your choice to wear the shirt since your message that you want to send. Um, it's just, we want to make sure that you're aware of what message you're sending. If that's a message you want to stand behind, okay, yeah. that's your choice. She kept arguing with us and saying that what we were doing was hate speech and not okay. There was, no violation. Well, we plan on um, filing a complaint against the teacher um, that did this because she was uh, discriminating against my child. And I, I feel like that's ridiculous that the school allowed it to go on and the school never notified me that he was pulled into the principal's office. The only reason I know is because he told me and also the videos, you know, prove it. How do you feel about the you know, maybe having that teacher next year. Uh, I would say I'm not looking forward to that, and it's gonna be very interesting if I do have that teacher. So there's that part. Um, we're gonna move forward a little bit here, um, but let me speak on that right quick. I will respond to that comment after I make this video because I gotta make this video. So, uh, so let's get that there. That we can just hop right into it. So. The principal pulls in the kids and says that we want to make sure you understand what you're what you're saying. If you believe that these kids don't might not understand what they're saying in the shirt that they're wearing and saying that there are two genders, if you're saying that they might not even understand what they're really trying to convey, how then can you also convey to them that there are multiple genders, right? If you believe the children can't even grasp the concept of what the shirt they're wearing is even representing, how can you also then, sorry, how can you also then say, oh, well, uh, where there are multiple genders and you have to understand that. It's like, you know what I'm saying? They're getting on these kids for putting on a shirt that they think they might not understand, but also expect them to understand the concept that there are multiple genders and that there is no biological stuff that we can go by, and there is pride, and you can't be this, and a man can't be a woman. You're suspecting them to know all of this confusing mumbo jumbo, and you want them to know every letter of the entire alphabet crew and understand every color in the flag, right? But you think that they can't understand the concept of two genders? That's what's insane to me. You push all this confusing stuff on these kids and then expect them when they stand up and say, hey, well, maybe I might not agree with this. You think that they're too dumb to understand what they're even going against. But you expect them to just go against it, go completely for what you want without even thinking about it. That even drives home more of the problem when you bring in sexuality. You bring in all of this stuff that only adults should be really having a conversation about. That's, that's the problem here. We got to stop dragging these kids into these adult situations. It's like, and it's not, it's not that everybody's doing it. It's certain people that do it. It's adults that know they can't defend themselves that they bring the kids into it. They try to get the kids to get behind them. And because we see it all the time when we see people make videos and they're like, hey guys, how's it going? Hold on, let me, let me get the camera. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, Today, I told my kindergarten class, hold on, let me get the music right. Today, I told my kindergarten class that I want to be called Mix instead of Mr. or Miss. And all of them, they just, they started clapping and saying that they support me and that they believe in me and they believe in love is love. My five-year-olds, they don't know how to spell their name. Um, they, they don't even know what one plus one is, but they understand that 
the the nuance that comes with gender in that you can be whatever you want to be um except for straight um so thank you um and i wish parents understood this i run the children they don't the children love me not you thank you and that's what we get it it, it, it sounds insane It, it does all right let's go over to the next part Son described the atmosphere at school regarding the LGBTQ push in the curriculum, especially during Pride Month. Um, he said it was very excessive. And I, he asked me if he could leave during class when they were taking time to just talk about... Hold on, let me uh, push that back just a little because it doesn't sound like y'all got the context there. ...backed all of the students. And that's what was, that's what was unfortunate. You know, I have no problem with kids with children wanting to express themselves in any way that they want to. If they want to wear a pride shirt, that's fine. But I think countering um, other kids should be able to wear an American flag shirt or a, there are only two gender shirts or, you know, anything like that. And unfortunately, a lot of those kids were told not to. How has your son described the atmosphere at school regarding the LGBTQ push in the curriculum, especially during Pride Month? Um, he said it was very excessive and I, he asked me if he could leave during class when they were taking time to just talk about that. And I, I told him he could, um, you know, his goal with school is to go and learn. And there was a push for open communication about pride month in class, every class, almost every single day. So he, he found that to be very distracting. Very distracting. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son has always been a straight A student. And he came out of the school year with two D's, which was very unfortunate. Was your son upset by the LGBTQ curriculum because it made him uncomfortable? Or what caused that reaction out of him? Because it was taken away from his learning. He had homework in all classes. He, you know, was behind in this or behind in that. And he wasn't given an opportunity to complete the tasks that were put on them because they were focusing on, on Pride Month conversations rather than allowing kids to, hey, during Academy, let's do your homework, let's do this, you can go and retake this test with this teacher, or do this with that. There were just so many distractions in that last month of school, especially during finals. So if I understand this properly, his frustration was that it had really had nothing to do with the topic per se. Yeah but that it was getting in the way of academics. Yes. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. I've heard that Mondays at Cloudia secondary are dedicated to DEI mm-hmm. or social emotional learning yeah, classes. Same. Yeah. How has he responded to those classes? He doesn't, he doesn't like them. He doesn't like any of those. Um, a lot of the social emotional learning that they do is um, directed more towards trying to get kids to find what's wrong in their lives rather than celebrating what is going good. And for a 14 year old to walk into school and have to sit there and talk about essentially made up issues at home so that he can fit in in this social emotional class or the social emotional learning part um, is really hard. Obviously this Okay, so I want to talk about that social emotional thing. I actually, believe it or not, I taught social and emotional to not a class of kids, just one individual. Uh, I've been in the classes, though. There is that is a thing here, even where I live, social emotional, which is a weird thing that I learned about here. Um, Not every school does it. The schools I've worked out previously did not have a dedicated social emotional. But here in the last few years, I have seen schools that do it and even I taught on it um the the kid I taught it to hated it too absolutely hated it because you do have to create scenarios now this kid didn't need it he didn't need necessarily the class but he did need to learn how to control his emotions but at the same time I'm cool with the parents teacher I only taught it because I was told I had to uh so I agree that sometimes when it comes to the social emotional learning that Yes, there are some kids who are dealing with stuff at home. Absolutely, that is true. Do I think there needs to be a dedicated class to it? Um, I don't. 
um, because even me growing up, when I was just in my earlier years, when I was struggling behaviorally, I was a bad kid, um, very confused, trying to figure it out. Remember, uh, I grew up with drug addicted parents and I was adopted after a while. And so I was dealing with all that, especially being a kid, didn't know what was going on. So I just acted out, um, always trying to seek attention. So I went to counseling. Um, but did I, do I think that every kid in the class needed to talk about that? No. Um, we tend to figure stuff out on our own. I wouldn't even say I went to a school that was like bad, but did we have kids that would say stuff, stupid stuff? I had, we had a kid that went around cutting people. Believe that or not. <laughs> I'm not even joking about that. It's that sounds insane. Does it not? But that person got rid of, we got rid of that individual very quickly. Um, but I don't think a social emotional class would have helped that individual. That person was obviously deranged and that person was weird every day. I knew them. They went from being a sweet little girl to, I mean, absolutely insane. And so, yeah, we got rid of that person and we have a thing called alternative school. If y'all, if y'all know about that. And I think those programs work a little bit better to keep those kids out because you know, what's so funny is a lot of the kids that I, um, who I knew went to alternative school, they did fine. It was stricter, obviously. They were right on top of your neck. But those kids, they loved it for some reason. Every kid I saw who went to alternative school, they're like, hey, man, I enjoy it. It was more laid It was more laid back, but it was strict. You know what I mean? There was less everything going on and more, hey, here's what we're going to do this time, this time, this time. Don't get crazy. You know? But they loved it for some reason because I guess it gave them more of an outlet to um, calm themselves down because, I don't know. Hold on, let me read this right quick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I would agree with that, too, that it is more about feelings, talking about, hey, what do you do when you're sad? What do you do when you're mad? And But the problem is, is, even in those things, it sounds coarse. And I hate saying that, but it does. The teachers, because they start this social emotional learning at a young age. They started, where I live, they started at five years old, at five. And so these kids really don't know what the heck is going on. But the, what they'll say is, you know, when you're sad, you're being mean to your mommy. You know what you need to do? This. This is what you should do, right? This. And it's like, I mean, you're not really teaching them to deal with their emotions. You're just telling them that they feel sad. A kiss, of course, every kid is going to say yes because they're five. So they're going to agree with everything you say. And then you say this is what you're supposed to do, even though that solution doesn't sound like even uh, feasible. No kid is going to think that way at five. They're not going to be like, you know what? I'm sad. I remember that Miss Bonnie has said, I need to one, two, three, breathe. And then come on, man. So I don't enjoy the classes like that, but hey, maybe you disagree. Um, but yeah, I think they're more feelings based than anything. So let's move forward here. Uh, buckle up. This is going to be a long video. So if you like long videos, great. If you don't, hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't. Don't know what to tell you. All right, let's get back into it. Explain to them how their shirt was offensive. So not only did he take away from those two students, but he also took away from the rest of his class. And that was, um, and so his wife is my son's teacher. And because he heard about that incident that happened, my son wore his sweatshirt in her class. They're the ones that started the, um, the Gay Straight Alliance. Claudia. Ah, so two teachers at the school who started the Gay Straight Alliance took particular issue with the shirts. Mm -hmm. I've heard that there were some teachers that in response to the shirts, there are only two genders, started wearing shirts that said today is an excellent day or today is a good day to respect someone else's pronouns. Mm -hmm. Had you heard anything about that? I have not. Mm -hmm. Not saying that yeah, I have no yeah. proof of that. But if yeah. that is true, how do you feel about teachers engaging with their students in that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I've obviously watched this whole thing already. Um, there's going to be another person in this video who confirmed that that did happen. So this woman's response is going to be on point. Kind of a way. I think it's highly inappropriate. You know, we um, we put our kids in public school for reading, writing and, and arithmetic essentially. Um, I don't put my kids in public school to find out why Miss Jones thinks that this is okay and why this isn't okay. Um, I want my kids to learn the basics, period. So given all that happened this past school year, do you have any concerns going into 
this new semester? I don't have concerns for my son's safety, for my other children's safety. I don't have concerns that they're going to be harassed. I'm certain they probably will, but I know that they can hold their head high. Um, my concern is that their grades are going to continue to slip mm -hmm. and that their, the morale, the, um, you know, the fire that my kids have is going to slowly start to slip away because they're just being pushed and pushed and pushed so much. Could you explain what you mean when you say morale is slipping? Kids don't get to be kids anymore. Um, you know, they're, they're given all of these, uh, all of these things, these adult decisions to make that they're not able to enjoy their childhood. They're not able to enjoy that high school experience, that middle school, middle school experience, even the elementary experience for crying out loud at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're just, they're pushed so much to become an adult without the proper tools. Um, and that, that, uh, the sincerity, the, um, innocence is just kind of taken away from these kids bit by bit because of it. So if, if that part right there is so important, I'm not going to talk too long on it because I just did a lot of talking. We're going to move forward a little bit here, but I do want to at least talk about, that's what I was saying earlier. Number one, the, the parents, the two, uh, uh, the adults, uh, what I heard in this interview was it was two adults that went around saying it's a great day to uh, respect other people's pronouns. That's my point. That is the point I was trying to make earlier when I said that they were going after the kids that wearing the two gender shirt. You expect these kids to be activists. They wear a shirt that they believe it and you immediately fight it. You immediately put on a shirt to go against them and then say that we're supposed to be inclusive here. But the second somebody wears a shirt, you completely go against them and put on something that says, oh, it's a great day to respect pronouns. That's wild to me. And you in a school like that, it's going to be hard for the kids to even survive. And the fact that the school didn't even say anything about it. And like I said, later on, it is confirmed that this did happen. The kids can't even grow up. The lady said at elementary, for goodness sake, and I agree with that. It's like when they're five, six, seven, they've already got to deal with the hardships of life. And you wonder why. I know people make fun of the Gen Z and everything, but to be fair, to be fair. Yes, that we have every generation has something that was hard. Every generation has to deal with something. But you you look at Gen Z and think they're just wild kids and you think they're just wild or whatever generations after that. Uh, Y'all let me know, what, what's the generation after Gen Z? But the generation coming up, you got to see, man, that they're going to come out completely bonkers. I mean, these kids are literally being used as a ploy to be put into the political fire. Every day they go to school, they're going to be told, are you trans? Are you not trans? Do you want to have surgery? Do you not want to have surgery? Do you believe in the LGBT? Do you not believe in the LGBT? Do you want to see? They got to pick a side by the time they're 10 years old. They got to figure out where they want to where they want to get in and fit in. And so, no, of course, you're going to get kids that are going to immediately go to the side that they feel is winning. Whatever side that's the bet in each school is going to be different. Whatever side is winning is where the, most of the kids are going to go. No kid wants to go to school and have to deal with harassment every day no kid's gonna want to have to fight that every single day you know so of course kids be like oh screw it i'll just be gay i, I mean i'm being serious they may, they may not say that but they may be like I, i'll just be i'll just be an ally i don't even i'm just trying to pass my class i just want to come to school chill i got enough going on at home so i'm not about to come to school and be like hey oh yeah i disagree with this because of this 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 because the problem is they're not fighting just the kids they have grown adults the lady made a good point when she said the adults the uh, these kids do not have the same tools that the adults do because remember unlike the adults some of them are teachers some of them are paraprofessionals some of them are custodians they ain't thinking about lesson planning and all that they go to work they come home but the kids they have to go to school they have to make sure they have to pass everything they might be playing football volleyball soccer ball, being a ballerina they might have so much going on then they got to go to their youth group at church and then they also got to go to this and that and this and that by the time they get home they go right to bed and not only did that they have to wake up go back to school and fight for their lives pretty much against grown adults who have tools and know how to compartmentalize and know how to deal with it but 
You know what I'm saying? And even then, most teachers are teaching one class. It's not like they're teaching 18 classes. So they only have to prepare one lesson plan for one grade and just keep repeating, recycle and repeat. Not saying that being a teacher is not hard, but at the same time, you got to understand the students are having to remember all of the classes, all of the extracurricular activities, and they have to fight against if they want to be on this side or that side. You cannot expect kids to be able to do that. That's just insane. That is just insane. That's why even when I was still doing the teaching thing, when a kid would come up to me and ask me a serious question, like seriously, like how do I feel about this or how do I feel about that? You know, especially I've had kids talk about, you know, I had kids at my school get bullied for being gay. And even though y'all know I don't agree with it, I still defended the kid. But at the same time, I'm not going to go into bat. That's why I don't go in there picking sides. I don't go in there saying, well, I, oh, yeah, I completely agree with you. I don't think gay. I don't do all that because these kids are kids. I tell them, do not bully for somebody for the way they are acting right now. Even if I personally disagree with it, I don't care. The point of school is not for me to get in there and give my political agenda or give my beliefs. These kids are supposed to be kids. Focus on school. That's what I try to teach these kids. If a kid really wanted to sit down and have a conversation with me about trans, that I did have a kid who wanted to do that with me. Talk about being trans. Listen, I'm not going to have the discussion with you. Go home and talk to your parents about that. The only way I would really sit down, have a serious conversation with a child about such things is if I had no other choice. Meaning that I got pulled into the office and my supervisor is saying, hey, this kid is saying this about this. And I know you teach this kid. Can we have a conversation? Well, what else can I do? Those situations do happen if you work at a school. Sometimes you get pulled into a kid's situation. You don't really want to be in it. You don't agree with it. But your supervisor says that we all need to have a talk because you work with this kid in particular. And, you you know, I, sometimes I work closely with kids. I did one-on-ones and stuff like that. So sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But for the most part, man, I just told kids, don't even bring it up to me. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm not. I'm not. I know that I understand stuff better than most kids, but I don't want to influence them at school. I'd rather them talk to their parents about it, understanding that that can't always happen. I get it. But I, like I said, I tried my best that if it came down to the conversation, I would avoid it. And I'm not going to talk to you about that. One kid wanted to talk to me about if they thought drinking was okay. Um, no, they didn't ask me about drinking. They asked me about alcohol. And stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. It's inappropriate. But some teachers are different than me. Some teachers, if you walked up to them and said, hey, I think I'm a boy. These teachers are going to go and tell you you're validated. You're this, you're that. They think they have ultimate authority over these kids because they have a bad home life. It's a hard. Listen, it, uh, to be fair, though, it is hard. It is absolutely hard to pick and choose your battles. You know, it is. It is hard not to be like, oh, what is this? How I feel. And I'm not going to lie. Here's. The one time I did do it, I had a conversation with the kid about being trans. I didn't persuade them one way or another. I didn't say I thought it was right. I didn't tell them I thought it was wrong. I told them logically. I said, here's my, I said, logically, is this how you feel? I said, if a black kid, um, if a black kid was dealing with racism, could they change your skin color? They said, no. I said, okay. So do you feel like that black kid would have to learn to accept themselves or become white? And, you know, they said this. Now, the kids still disagree with me and I didn't I didn't push it any further. But I just wanted them to see that it's not always as simple as changing yourself to be accepted. That's all I was trying to get across. Did it work? I don't know. Don't care. You know, that kid is going to live their life. But at the same time, I just try to present an argument, be logical about it. You make your own decision. But just understand, I was trying to get the kid to understand that not everybody gets to change themselves um, because of how they what they're going through. You know, some people do have to learn to accept themselves and that just is what it is. So try to understand other people's plight. That's all I was trying to get across is, yes, I understand you're going through this, but understand that there's people who's going through what you're going through, but they can't do anything about it. So show love to them, too. That was my point. And that's that's the only time I've ever had that kind of conversation, man. But I'm just saying, man, I understand that it's hard, but we got to keep these kids out of the political light. I will get to that comment here in a second. Uh, let me get to this next point and uh, we'll get it going. I'm doing a lot. I told y'all it was going to be a long video, man. But I kind of talked and realized that Flag Day might be the most appropriate day to do it. 
And so, yeah, I did, and I supported her. It was her and two other friends. Okay. So you mentioned um, that this was a plan for her in reaction to the pride flags around the school. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. There, there was a lot going on in the school for Pride Month, and, you know, students that don't agree with those boundaries being crossed were really kind of thrown for a loop when every classroom had a pride flag. There was lots of things going on regarding, you know, pride celebrations and that sort of thing. So it was, I guess, kind of a way to show like this flag here symbolizes all Americans. This flag was put into place to represent the sacrifices made for our country. Um, and I had actually talked to Mr. McDaniel about two weeks prior to Pride Month about another incident. And I was like, you know, I'm going to take the opportunity to talk with him about what June is going to look like. And I said, well, how is it going to be for Pride Month? Are there going to be things around the school? And of course, he deflected it. Well, yes, but that's per the school district, Central Kids app, because they're, you know, the accountability he doesn't want on his shoulders, whatever his stance is. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I had said, well, why, why do we feel like we need to put the pride flags up when we have American flags? And he told me, because pride flags are all inclusive of all people. And I, that kind of threw me, you know, I was like, I don't agree with that at all. How is, it, kind of where our conversation how is the flag all inclusive? Think about that for a second. How is the pride flag all inclusive when clearly it's not all inclusive? You have to be. A, have, believe in a specific way to represent the pride flag. It is not, it, how can it be all inclusive and then completely neglect people who are straight? That's not a pride flag. That is for people who have sex. And the fl pride flag is so big now because it has the trans color in there, the blue, white, and whatever, blue, white, pink. Then it has black and brown people in there. So white people are just completely excluded, even though a lot of the pride is white. Uh, but they, they go, it, it makes no sense. The pride flag will talk against white people and then also be almost dang near all white. And then, but they act like they're people of color at the same time. It's just a confusing world, man. With, with my daughter and with my other students that go there, because I have two other students. So um, it kind of went back to that, like that they're kind of pushing this to be an all inclusive flag, but it's not. Okay. So the argument that you were given was that in some way, the pride flag is all inclusive, and yet the American flag is not. That was kind of how it felt. Um, you know, I don't really feel a reason to cross boundaries and bring pride things into school when there's already a symbol that recognize that is recognized as you know that which represents our country and all the people within our country. Um, when were you first informed that there had been an incident at the school? The incident regarding the flag, correct? Correct. Well, I got a text message from my daughter. Um, I told her, I said, I need you to inform me when you're doing this because I wanted to know prior to being contacted by anybody else, right? So mm -hmm. she messaged me and was very proud. Her and her friends were very proud. Um, and it was actually really cool because there's a resource officer that helped them as well as a janitor, um, which I thought was really nice to see that because I feel like a lot of times these freedom fighting kids kind of feel like they can be the anomaly in the schools, you know, that maybe they don't have the support that the other kids have, you know. So she informed me and I said, good on you. I said, just remember to be respectful because that's what we all teach our kids, right? Mm -hmm. There is um, adults within a school that we need to respect. And she said, I got you, mom. And I said, and if you have any incidents with anybody, try to record them if you can, just because I want her to be able to go back on that because things can get twisted. So um, did, did the principal, Scott McDaniels, reach out to you personally regarding this incident? Mr. McDaniels did. He reached out. It was probably a few minutes after I talked to Keely. I got a phone call, you know, which I was prepared for. I knew he was going to call. And he said, I just want to let you know. I said, I know. I know that my daughter and her friends put up a flag. And uh, I'm okay with that. And he goes, okay, well, I am asked her to take her eight down. And she is not doing that. I said, well, I support my daughter. If she decides to keep it up and stand there with the flag. I support her. If she chooses that she's gonna take it down, then I support her as well. And that was very clear. I made that very clear multiple times that I was gonna support my daughter. And I did ask him at that time, I said, what is wrong with an American flag being put up in the school? 
They mm -hmm. said that should be everywhere within the school. You know, that's what gives us our rights. And again, the symbol of our country and our freedoms. He said, well, everything that gets put up in the hallways has to go through a routing, right? It takes a day or so. And I'm like, okay, but this is an American flag. What, what a, anything else could it symbolize, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, there's a pamphlet of paper with it. I said, well, she can take that down if that's what's bothering you. And, and I said, and she understands that she couldn't place the flag right because of where the pride flag was placed, right? Because there's proper handling and placement of flags. And I said, that does bother Keely, but she's at least showing that they'd like to have the American flag up there and maybe later it can be moved. So that was it. Again, I reiterated, like I supported whatever my daughter was going to do. And that was kind of where it was left. Um, what was the response? From Okay, so later on, she's gonna we're gonna talk about um, more. I just want y'all to hear the whole story before I could uh, move forward here with the. Uh, hold on, let me make sure I didn't. Yeah, there's a part right after this that I timestamps. Just want to make sure that. <clears throat> I'm okay. So once again, the the young girl goes to go put up the flag. It's obviously a problem. They're told to take it down. The girl does end up taking down the flag. Um, but th it, that's the problem. That's the same thing we saw when we saw, um, y'all remember the, uh, the trans woman who went to the white house, sh showed her breasts, even though she had her covered with her hands, but she got banned for life pretty much. But at, during that whole speech, you saw the president had put up two American flags on the white house, right? But they were on the outside and the central flag was the pride flag. And he said, this is the flag of America. And he was absolutely right. Doesn't it seem like the pride flag is the flag of America now? Because it's like everything that is entailed in that thing. Everything that is entailed in the LGBT plus flag. Because now they added Black Lives Matter and trans in there. Into that same flag, which, you know, when you put it all together, it looks kind of weird. But nonetheless, doesn't it seem like that, that it runs the world? That, that That's the biggest battle we have over here. There's obviously a lot of evil stuff going on. But we tend to just get stuck in this battle of fighting about who's trans, who's not trans, who can be in the locker room. Speaking of that, before I uh, continue on, I'm going to go back into this video. They are actually starting to do the open category that we have been speaking about for years. Uh, chess has done it, and I believe there's a uh, country that did swimming. So two, two people have finally made it an open category for trans people. Now, who do you think is going to win the vast majority of those competitions? Trans women. Men. Okay? Men. There is not going to be a whole lot of trans men, trans men winning the open category. It's going to be mainly men. But at least they have their own category. And they can, shh. Now, here's going to be my problem. If they start complaining about having an open category, then everything they argued about being able to do their own thing was disingenuous. It was never about um, being able to have their own category compete safely. It was always about taking over women's sports. If they start pushing back on that, which they have, but I want to see this open category. I would love to see it. I want to see it because I want to see who dominates and then we'll, we'll have a real discussion then. But we know who's going to dominate those open categories. I just want to throw that out there. Just something I saw. All right, let's continue. I ever heard from was Mr. McDaniels. Um, I never heard from him after I talked to him the first time. Um, I lost a lot of trust in him though, because he went on to tell my daughter that I said to take it down, that I had told him that I agreed with him to have her take it down. I did not say that at all. I said I supported my daughter what she chose to do. And so that kind of bothered me because it's, you know, he told something to my daughter and she was confused. And in that time, she didn't have time to call me and say, hey, what's going on, mom? So. All right. So let's move forward. I just want y'all to hear that part. Um, I think she explains it. She doesn't explain what I think she did. If I didn't time stamp it, that's fine. But. Counselor, because she supports certain things that I don't support. And that's sad. And when you have faculty that, in my opinion, reacted to the two gender shirts by wearing those. You know, what are you creating for those? Okay, so she here's where she explains that the two teachers were wearing that shirt. Let me back up a little bit. Wearing faculty and a group, because I think it's a group. Is that made by the school? The school merchandise store? Or? I couldn't tell you, to be totally honest with you, but they're all the same. So wherever they're getting them, they're getting them the same they're made. And... Okay, so that is the, as far as you're aware, the, there are only two gender shirts was a reaction to the, 
the eagle pride i think shirts. it had something to do with it i think it had it's it goes both ways you can't wear these pride shirts and these kids not have a chance to show how they feel and you know there was the shirt that after the two gender shirts were allowed you know mr mcdaniel said don't bother these kids there was faculty going around with a shirt that says today is a good day to recognize somebody's pronoun and it was faculty wearing it and i thought to me that's a reaction to those two gender shirts and that makes students feel super uncomfortable and when a student feels i mean that's where i feel like the political climate because to me you're creating this diversity and this tension for these kids. I've had it, my, my son that went to Klahalia, he's like, mom, I don't even feel I can go, I can go talk to my counselor because she supports certain things that I don't support. And that's sad. And when you have faculty that, in my opinion, reacted to the two gender shirts by wearing those, you know, what are you creating for those kids that have traditional values that, you know, don't necessarily feel like pride months should be in the school mm -hmm. and now you know some of these children and you obviously know your daughter and, and your children would you characterize any of them as as doing this out of um a dislike for gay people no no and i will tell you i get emotional when you say that because my sister's gay we have family who's gay that is not it it's about them knowing that there's lines being crossed and people being pushed to view a certain way. And we all need to live our lives. And I've taught my kids that. You cannot judge somebody, but it's one thing to feel like you're getting things pushed down your throat. Right. That is not it at all. So for people to come out and say, they're bigots, they're hateful. I had somebody tell me that because I was proud of my kids for what they did. And it's like, my kids are not hateful. My kids have friends that are gay, but they do their thing and they do theirs. And that's okay. But when we're grooming and telling these kids that they have to accept this, that's mm -hmm. not right either. Yeah. And they're kids, you know? Well, gays against... So, yeah, she, she pretty much going to go on to say that gays against groomers does, um, it does back them and support them. And and then the little girl comes on who did the flag. But that's not important because she pretty much just reiterates what the mom said there. I just want you all to see that part with that. It was confirmed that those two teachers did come up and write, wear those shirts um, and say that, you know, it's a good day to put... Uh, whatever. You know, it's a good day to respect other people's pronouns, pretty much what the shirt said. Uh, eh, man. Y'all don't, I, I believe y'all know that this stuff is going on, but I want y'all to kind of see what, how parents feel. It always seems to be one-sided. It seems it'll be, it'll be a school against just one concerned parent. But to understand that the students are going through it too. And I think that a lot of the time it is us parents versus the school but the students are in the fight, too. And that's what I think parents are just trying to get the schools to understand. It's like, I get it. You want to represent this. You want to represent that. But why? Why? That's the question I ask. It's like, y'all are not running a coffee business in the middle of the city. This is a school for students to learn because they have no choice. <laughs> Be honest, man. I'm not against schools, obviously, but I'm just saying these kids have to go to school to get state law for these kids not to go to school. So they got to be here. So why are you forcing them to also come to school and go through agendas? Like, why do you have to do it here where the vast majority of the people at this school are minors? The vast majority of the school is not the faculty. I've never worked at a school where there was more faculty than kids. Well, there is one school that I had known of. I think there was like five teachers and like one kid but in you know it was weird but <laughs> that school got closed down obviously but my, my thing is it's just like it's just the vast majority of the people out of school are going to be minors so why do you want to push the price stuff here like it sounds like y'all the adults are dealing with the pride stuff but why do you want to push it on the kids just go do that at your own establishment. Go do that at your group outside of school. If y'all can, y'all take religion out of school, but then put in dang near another religion that they have to conform to. It's just wild to me. You guys sometimes are against doing the Pledge of Allegiance, but y'all want to make sure that kids can do pride every dang month. Come on, man. Keep the kids out of it. You don't want to have all this political grandstanding. Fine. You know, even when I took classes back in high school, we took economics, we took political classes, obviously. The teachers never pushed their politics on us. You know, it was clear which what side they were on. It's almost impossible to keep your bias 
um, completely. All of us struggle with that. But it, you might know the teacher is Republican, Democrat, conservative or whatever. But at the same time, it's like they pushed it on you. They just taught you what they believed. And this is what it was. They didn't teach you what they believed. They, they taught you from a book and said, hey, this is what this side believes. This is what this side believes. Sometimes they agree here. And that's it. And that was the end of the discussion. You took a test on it. You failed or you passed. And that was pretty much how it went. Um, but how do you go to school and then wear a T-shirt and then the teachers wear a T-shirt against you? It's just like, you're right. How are the kids supposed to be comfortable going to school now? Because they're going to be scared. Imagine if I went to school and I saw a teacher who has has complete control over me as an adult and authority-wise, and, and they also can give me an A or an F, and I wear a shirt, and then they come to school and wear a shirt that's against me because I wore a shirt. It's like, man, I, I feel like it's me against the teacher. And I mean, like, who's going to win that battle? Not me. How am I supposed to win that battle? Getting the teacher fired, maybe? This is clearly not going to happen. The whole dang faculty is saying that I need to. Now, obviously, there were some people who were against it. But the whole school is doing the prize stuff. So who's going to win the battle? Me or them? Who's going to get suspended? Me or them? Who's going to be in detention? Me or them? Who's going to get an A or an F? Me or them? That's stressful to wake up every day and be like, man, I'm trying to do my math homework the best I can. But Miss Jones, I mean, she already hates me, clearly. She wore a shirt that says that she's against me. What the heck am I supposed to do? You're going to hate being in the class. You're going to hate the students in there. You're going to hate the people who are against you. And you're just trying to make friends. This is what I always push against. And I'll push against it every time I get on you. You have to try. I know in every circumstance you can't think about everybody every time you make a decision. Okay? You can't. I get that. I completely understand that. But when you guys decide to have these debates with your friends or you try to have these debates with your coworkers or whatever you want to do, I just want I just try to push that there are other people involved. When y'all want to debate if there's LGBTQ in the schools, can we think about the kids? That's all I'm asking, because that sounds like something that adults would be having a conversation about in a school where there's so many minors. It'd just be better to keep it out of there because you see how it affects the students. Imagine how it feels coming to school and you having to deal with that. And then people think about, what about the lesbian and gay people? If you keep it out of school, the discussion doesn't even have to go that far. But because you put it in the schools, you have to fight it. And, be, you know, if, a, if, there's a, if there's a kid who's struggling with homosexuality, it's not going to matter if you're not in there saying, hey, let's be straight. Let's be straight. Let's be. They're not going to feel excluded because nobody is even talking about it. You know? That's just the beauty of it. And here's the beautiful thing as the individual who also works in the school. Hey, every kid is going to feel excluded at some point. Every kid, whether they're gay or straight, short, tall, fat, not fat, black, not black, white, not white, Asian, not Asian, and every other race you could think of. Whether they wear glasses or don't wear glasses, left-handed, play football, unathletic, they're in the chess club, they're nerds, they're not nerds, they're at the bottom of their class, they're at the top of their class. Every kid at some point probably is going to feel excluded in some way, and there's just no way on earth that you're going to be able to get to every one of them. It just seems that one demographic tends to get pushed to the top no matter what. There's going to be one gay kid who say he got bullied, and then we're going to be, bam, we got to push them to the top and make sure everybody loves every gay person they run into. And I remember meeting a guy when I was in high school and I used to fight people on this all the time, not fight physically, but we, I, the, the argument used to come up. There was one kid in my school that called himself gay, you know, struggle with homosexuality, whatever. He was an absolute, butt, though, he was one of the meanest people I knew at the school by far, but because he was gay, he got away with it more often. And I, I would not even say him because I don't even like saying he was gay because it was just really that he was feminine. He had the girls who backed him, right? And so anytime you, anybody went against this individual, and we a lot of us hated him, right? Except for the girls for the main part. But a lot of us guys hated him not because he was feminine, but because he was a jerk about it. He would say the most awful stuff and then go get his girls to back him up. And then he'd be like, and then the second you went against him, he'd be like, oh, because he's homosexual. That see, that's my problem. Is that if I bully somebody who's homosexual, I'm the I'm the meanest person on the planet. 
I only bullied him because I bully everybody. He just also happens to be homosexual. But if he bullies me and talks to me crazy, I don't get no, I don't see him getting no counseling. How come he don't get talked to? How come he don't get the conversation? How come it's only me? How come it's only one way? You know, I feel the same way. Like if somebody's bullying somebody because they wear glasses, right? And then you defend the person who wears glasses and then the glasses person goes and beat up somebody else and you don't say nothing to the person who wears glasses. It's like, dude, if we're going to play this this way, everybody's getting in trouble. But y'all are so scared and so sensitive because the person who happens to have a certain sexuality gets pushed to the top of the list. I, I mean, I get it. We just gone too far. They are a protected class. You can't do anything. Like I said, these kids wore shirts and they're immediately pushed into dang they need to go might as well might as well might as well just drop out of school and go be a politician. Because apparently that's what they want y'all to do. Forget math and all that stuff. You need to get out and you need to go say, Hey, I'm against the LGBT and now they're speaking on camera and they're up there on the podium saying, I don't believe it's crazy. They really expect kids at fifteen to be us. It is hard. Let me be honest with you guys. And I don't even get the brunt of it where I live now. Back where I used to live, oh yeah, I used to get in political battles all the time. In fact, I would debate so much that dang, I even I started to question myself. I'm like, dang, is everything in a debate? I love to debate. I love to talk, but it does it does wear you down, you know. And sometimes you want it. Sometimes it's, I ain't gonna lie to you. There's times I, I strayed from a fight because it's like I just ain't got it in me, dog. I just I let somebody. I, sometimes you just let people get away with what they say, you know. <laughs> and you just be like I, I don't feel like disagreeing with it right now I just don't It is hard to pick this line of work And I don't suggest it for everybody Because a lot of hardships A lot of hardships come with it As I've said before People y'all see people today They get doxxed People come after them People truly hate them You get so many trolls You get people who love you too But you get But the people who love you They'll just be like Hey man I think you're doing a great job But the people who hate you Hate you they're going to call you everything. They will say the most vile stuff. They'll make sure that people know where you live. They're going to make sure people, um, when they, if they see you in public, you ain't going to be able to walk around in public. You won't have to you pretty much stay around your house, maybe have security, all this kind of stuff, because people are just going to hate you that bad because they feel like you're personally attacking them. So once again, if you ever decide to get into this line of work, not necessarily be a politician, but if you want to be a... Uh, commentary channel such as mine and you really want to speak against the politics of it all and if you're just a commentary channel that speaks against other youtubers or other people in social media if you really believe what you are saying absolutely i want you to do it die on that hill if you believe it with all your heart and you don't care what happens to you um you you would be willing to die for this i'm being serious you're willing i'm not saying people are out killing each other but i'm saying like would you be willing to have a a life that's going to mean defending yourself and your family. Yeah, do it, please. There are people who do this for real like that. And we respect those people, man. And things happen. And I'm all for it. But if you cannot handle this, and if at any point you need to take a break, don't take a break every second, every time you get pushed back, because that's, that's not going to help you. But if you ever need to just get off and sign off for a week or two, or just do that, do it. But don't go away too long because people need you. But, at the same time, man, you see the battle we have, even in the schools. And imagine being a child dealing with this. Every day you're afraid somebody's going to come beat you up. Every single day you're afraid somebody's going to roll by your house, egg your house, or TP it is. So it'll that sound. It could be stressful as a kid because then your parents got to get the grunt of it. It's just like it's hard enough doing this as an adult. I get tired of looking at this stuff, but... I love it too. My passion for it and my drive, it way exceeds um, me getting worn down, you know? But you can't expect kids to be able to do this. That's why I also tell kids to just stay away from this YouTube life, period. Especially if they're going to be a commentary or they're going to be a, try to be political. I would, I would tell no kid unless they were in their 20s to even get on this because it's going to destroy them. But I digress. Anyway. Let me know what y'all think about this whole interview, uh, this whole documentary. Shout out to the Gays of Grimmers. They're doing good work out here. I wish more people uh, morally would do this kind of stuff, but they just want to sit back and do nothing. Um, so shout out to them, man. Like I said, 
obviously have disagreements against the group, but for, for what they're doing compared to what the rest of the people are doing, how can I hate? Even them are going against the Pride Month and the Pride Flags, and they are obviously part of it. So, got to give it to them. So I appreciate them, man. They're doing good work out there and they're really trying to get the stories out there and I appreciate it. So let me know what y'all think. Goodbye, YouTube.